हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल दिस इज योर होस्टस महजबीन येस्टरडे आई एक्सप्लेन द पोएम नाइट ऑफ द स्कॉर्पियन व्हिच वाज कंपोज्ड बाय निजिम एजिकल टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू नरेट द समरी ऑफ दिस पोएम सो हियर आई गो द पोएट बिगिंस द पोएम बाय सेइंग दैट ही स्टिल रिमेंबर्स द नाइट हिज मदर हैड बीन स्टंग बाय अ स्कॉर्पियन It had been raining continuously for 10 hours then. The scorpion had come indoors and had hidden beneath a sack of rice in the poet's house because it wanted to protect itself from the rain. After stinging the poet's mother on her toe, the scorpion braved the rain again. It had sneaked out of the house. The poison had been stored in the deadly tail of the insect. It had stung the poet's mother in the darkness of the night. It had been a rather sharp and nasty attack. The venom which had been concentrated in the insect's tail had now entered the woman's toe. She was in severe pain. On hearing the news about the scorpion sting, the farmers in the village flocked the house of the poet. They arrived in large numbers. Their appearance reminded the poet of the swarms of flies that moved about in the air. These village folks were a superstitious lot. They thought that the effect of the poison would die if they uttered the name of God. To them, the scorpion was the evil one. They hoped that their holy chance would paralyze the effect of the poison, which was now lodged in the toe of the poet's mother. The farmers visited the poet's house with candles and lanterns in their hands. The poet, being a small child at that time, thought that the shadows of these large numbers of peasants resembled the shadows of giant-sized scorpions these shadows had fallen upon the mud baked walls of the hut despite the intensive search indoors nobody could find the scorpion the villagers clicked their tongues to express their disappointment over their inability to locate the scorpion These superstitious farmers next said that every time the scorpion crawled outdoors its poison moved in the victim's blood so they wanted to catch hold of the insect and make it immobile otherwise the poison would spread into the other parts of the mother's body and that could be fatal The peasants who visited the poet's house prayed that the scorpion would not make any movement. They also prayed that God would pardon the victim of all those sins which she had committed in her past life because she was in intense pain now. They hoped that her present suffering would relieve her from the sorrows of her next birth. They also wished that the overall gap between the ugliness and goodness in this fake materialistic world would be reduced by the victim's intense pain the visitors also prayed that the victim of the scorpion's sting would be purified of all her earthly desires and cravings the peasant sat on the floor circling the victim while she lay on a mat Each of the farmers who had come to see the poet's mother sat on the floor with a calm expression on his face as though he fully understood the mysterious forces in the world and why the woman was suffering. More neighbors arrived with more candles and lanterns. Light the light from these candles and lanterns attracted more insects into the house. The rain continued to pour. The poet's mother was in utter anguish. The pain made her turn this way and that. She cried out in agony. The father of the poet was not a superstitious man. He had a scientific temperament. He tried out all kinds of experiments with herbs and powder, hoping that his wife would be relieved from the pain. He even poured a bit of paraffin on the bitten toe. The poet watched while his mother's flesh burned. 
the holy man chanted hymns so that the poison would be controlled. After an agonizing 20 hours, the pain subsided. The victim was healed. On recovering from this deadly sting, the poet's mother said that she was glad that the scorpion had chosen to attack her and not her children. She thanked God for his divine mercy as her children had been spared. While concluding, I would like to state that this poem reflects the depth of a mother's love for her children and how much pain she can endure for the sake of the safety and good health of her children. Do check out my previous video featuring line-by-line -line explanation of this poem. Meet you again very soon. Bye.